It has been quite a while since we've made a character builds for Lords of the Fallen. Mm -hmm. Mainly because I think that we have basically covered everything. We have as many builds, as many archetypes, character archetypes, classes, radiance, ruger, umbral, you name it. We have it posted here in the channel. Now we're going to make this one again. We have already posted a build for our Harrow Dervland Sword right here. This time is going to be a little bit different because in the recent update, on uh, the recent patch, there is a brand new skill, so we're going to structure things a little bit differently. Right here, I'm going to show you how to get this thing done, how to use it, how to get it, and uh, things like that. So first and foremost, when you hold, well, you, you're not supposed to hold it, but when you press the block and the right trigger, at the same time, R2, if you're playing in PlayStation, is going to do a special attack that is going to deal quite a lot of damage. And it varies depending on whether you're using it one-handed or two-handed. So for example, the one-handed version of this thing would be that. That's a slash that goes real, real far. And it deals quite a bit of damage, I'm not gonna lie. If you two-hand the weapon and then you use this thing, then it's going to do a little bit of a slash, but it's going to be uh, a little bit more for AoE, right? So those are the one things that you need to have in mind. Also, it does uses the resource that you have uh, below your health bar, so you need to have that resource, the one that you use to soul flay enemies, that is recover by killing enemies, the little souls that you see flying around that, that's something that uh, you can do to recover this thing. Now. Let's have the gameplay play in the background while I explain to you what is it that you have to do. First and foremost, you're going to be need to use uh, to be using the um, Martyr's Shackles. This is medium armor that you get by defeating the Harrower. So you cannot miss it, but just by gaining gaining the weapon, you're going to get, get access to this thing. The second thing is that you need to have completed Don Myers quest line. If you haven't completed Don Myers quest line, I think that this is not going to work for you. I have this thing in several characters. This is the character that I that I already had the quest line completed on. So it works for this character. The characters that I have that have not completed the quest line, they do not have access to this thing. So that's basically what you are going to need to do to be able to unlock the special attack of the weapon. Once that has been said, what about the stats? What are going to be the, the best stats for this weapon? As you can see, uh, building this one to be a dexterity one, we're spending quite a bit of points in strength right there that we're not going to be using. One thing that you need to have in mind is that this is a quality weapon that is going to scale properly with agility and strength. Here, we're going to be focusing on agility, at least for a main character. Have in mind that if you want to go beyond that, if you want to go to New Game Plus, if you want to make the weapon stronger, you can basically have agility and strength in 75, no problemo. So let's discuss about that. The first soft cap that we have in the game, it's 40 to 50, that's where you get the first diminishing returns, and then you have a hard cap at 75. We are not right there yet because my character level right here is in 115. If you want to go for 125, which is more than doable for the first playthrough, not something that you can certainly do, and that is going to get you your agility to 75 to reach the hard cap. And then beyond, you have the cap at 99, which is really no reason why you should be placing points in that. But this should be your end game stats. Uh, early game, early game. What you want to do is uh, you want to have a little bit of vitality on 20. Endurance is always going to remain there on 15. If you want to sprinkle a little bit more points in there, be my guest. You can also for the end game have endurance on 20. It is not going to be that important. And then uh, the agility early game, you should have it on 20. Early game. So this being the case. The main thing that you want to have is to start with a class that has like quality stats, like for example the Dark Crusader. I think that the Dark Crusader is the ideal class for this, but any class that has agility or strength, it's going to work just fine because you're not going to get this weapon until mid game. So that's something that you need to have in mind. Once you're in mid game, you need to have your strength in 29 and your agility should also be in 30, at least 25 or 30 ish, something close to that. 
because that is where you're going to need to have a, your uh, the weapon requires for 29 strength and 29 agility so that is your first goal to reach those stats to be able to wield the weapon and in mid game your vitality should be somewhere between 25 ish 30 ish end game you reach your vitality to 40 at that point you can start allocating the rest of your points into agility because for the first playthrough we're not going to be building this for quality we're going to be building this for agility at least that's the most damage that you can get for this character for the first playthrough like i mentioned before i know that this is a quality weapon uh, but i don't like quality weapons for the first playthrough because they the rune socketing for quality weapons it's really not that amazing it's really not that huge of a deal and as a matter of fact i am not going to lie to you this is not one of the best most highly damaged weapons the one thing that is going to make this shine is going to be the crossbow we'll talk about that a little bit later but as a matter of fact you know what let's actually talk about the weapons this is a quality weapon between strength and agility you have a b plus on strength and b plus on agility so that is the weapon that we're going to be using it also has frostbite 200 that's quite a lot but it is a heavy weapon so yeah that's something that you need to have in mind but the frostbite it's always nice at this point if you have the stats that i have showed you you're going to have seven 700 759 for attack power which is actually quite nice like i said it's not going to be as high as many of the other weapons that we have especially since this is a grand sword so it's very weighty as well uh the main thing that is going to make this appealing is that if you go into new game plus something that you can do if you want to keep leveling your character you can pump up your agility to 75 and your strength to 75 and that is going to increase the damage of the weapon tremendously which is just going to make it deadly but still like you can see right here it is very much viable for a first playthrough and the reason why we're going to be making this for a first playthrough mainly focus on agility because we have we have one of the best crossbows in the game which is Harrow uh Harrow Slag crossbow right here which is going to be a a scaling uh weapon it's going to reach 772 attack power remember that you can attach uh, explosive bolts to this thing and this Thing fires in a quick succession so that's something nice it, it burns quite a little bit of uh, ammunition but you have more than enough ammunition pouches in this game to be able to make up with all of that so basically you have a very amazing weapon that it has a brand new skill that you can see all throughout the rendition that you see on the gameplay of the background. You can use it as much as possible. My advice is for you to use that specific skill when you're fighting elites because it deals quite a lot of damage and it basically deletes them. And whenever you're fighting different elites, you not want to be using your crossbow that much. Then you can use the rest of the crossbow for the rest of the elites and just for clearing trash and mobs, you can be using the main weapon. Like I said, we're going to be using Martyr's Shackles right here because the Martyr's Shackles and uh, allow us to do that special attack. That's uh, how you're going to get it. Now, our Endurance is going to be suffering quite a lot, so we're going to be using the Ring of Bones to increase our maximum equip load. As a matter of fact, right now, we are just in the right place right here. Then the Mind Owner's Ring to increase our stamina regeneration, and since we are mainly a physical attack character, mm, mm, physical power character, we're going to be using the Warrior's Claw to increase our physical damage and physical defense. So that's basically everything that you need to do for the equipment. How about rune circuiting, rune allocation? Well, like I mentioned before, like I just told you, we're building for the first time, for the first playthrough, this to be mainly an agility character build because we can use a Oritix. And Oritix is a strength slot uh, gem or socket rune that increases your agility attribute scaling by reducing the strength attribute scaling. Yes, we are reducing our strength attribute scaling right there, but remember that that is just a side effect, at least for now. Later on, you can change this to something different that you would want to be using. But at this point, to increase our agility attribute scaling, which is the main attribute scaling that we have almost hard cap, and if you go to a 125, then you have the hard cap actually at the maximum. So the most damage that you're going to get is going to be coming from the Oritix. We're going to be able to use two of these guys. And then we have a Velox that we can use to increase our agility uh, attribute scaling 
a little bit more. So that is the most damage that you're going to get out of the runes. And yeah, I mean, the weapon is amazing. I like the weapon skill. I like the versatility that I have to be able to use a brand new skill. I think that it, this is something that it should have been on launch of the game. It should have been that. Uh, because the boss weapons weren't really that good. There were meta weapons that we would, we would always be using. But there was no real incentive to use the boss weapons. The boss weapons were not special. Opposite to different souls that we we have out there, where boss weapons are actually something that we want to use because they feel different, they have different things. It's not that again. This is not that the boss weapons are now going to be better or meta than everything that you have out there in the game. We have covered many weapons in this game that are basically much much better depending on the build that we, you have right there. But now at least the boss weapons are special and they have special attacks and they look cool. So this is the build for the Harrowers sword, the Revelast sword, and uh, yeah, join the Discord. We discuss about uh, RPGs in there, and we're going to be discussing about tons of things right there, and before I prepare my videos, I always help people right there. If you want to know about the new skills before I post a video, then that is probably the best place that you can be in. If you like the content, so you like and everybody's super appreciated, no one saw you today that you're gorgeous and beautiful person, you are indeed a gorgeous and beautiful, beautiful person. I will see you goddamn gorgeous and beautiful people in the next one. Have a lovely, lovely day, and goodbye.